Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm excited to bring you a conversation with Captain Crumbs, who alongside Splash is one of the reasons that I got into this Discord thing and Path of Magic all happened in the first place. So I'm really excited to learn more about your Valheim story. I'm doing good. I, I could always uh, jump into the other uh, voices that I'm doing. <laughs> now it's yeah, now it's more familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's 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 kind of how I speak, but it's drawn to a to an extreme, <laughs> like cartoonized. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you watch if you watch um, any streams that I I'm in or anything like that, and I'm I'm usually this is my normal voice. If I do like the build video, I can't really do the <laughs> weird accents. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we get started with kind of before you were playing Valheim. What kind of games did you enjoy? What were you doing, game wise? I was actually, <laughs> I was actually thinking about this uh, earlier today because uh, I have a hard time remembering what I did before Valheim, to be honest. I know that I played a lot of games like Skyrim and uh, uh, Fallout games like that, uh, but I'm not really entirely sure what what I played before. I played Volheim because I usually uh, I get uh, I get sucked into a game and I play that game like 24 hours a day for like a month to six months and then I put that game away and go to the next game. But Volheim has kind of been in my life since since I bought it. Yeah, and I know what you mean. Like uh, it's it's similar for me. So yeah. so would you say then that other games weren't memorable enough, really? So Valheim feels like the first game you really, really got into, or how does that make you feel? Well, uh, no, uh, yes and no, I guess. I mean, Skyrim and Fallout, I kind of always been into, but that's because you can you can mod the, them to like uh, whatever you want them to be, pretty much. The modding scene for both Valheim, uh, uh, I mean, Skyrim and uh, Fallout are kind of big. So I could. I think the last <clears throat> last time I played Skyrim, I spent like three months just adding mods to it to see what happened. Not not really playing the game, just like changing the game. <laughs> but that's not happened for for Valheim yet. Valheim, I, I'm uh, I'm kind of uh, into the vanilla experience still, which is weird because normally I'd be bored with the vanilla Valheim a long time ago. But I'm I'm not. <laughs> that that makes sense though. It like especially when you start getting involved with other people and communities then the the duration of entertainment that you can get from vanilla valheim gets quite extreme i yeah, don't think that, it's necessary to mod it no that is the big difference because with the the other games i mentioned they're single player games so you're pretty much on your own but with the community and with other people uh, it becomes something bigger yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, that that's why I wanted to thank both you and Splash, because you, you helped me step out of my comfort zone a bit. And a lot of what has happened now has happened not so much because I necessarily felt like doing it myself, but I would read a comment or read something someone said or them talking about their experience, and then I would start feeling like I want to do something about it. But without that other person talking about Valheim and me witnessing it and being in that position, then like maybe I would have done something else. Like I, I don't, I don't really know. It seems to be such an important part of what motivates me. So I, I'd say it's the same. It's, there's a huge difference between like playing a game that, yeah, it's like when other people are involved, it's not really a game anymore, is it? It's like more than that. Whereas if you're just playing. Skyrim alone you can talk to people about Skyrim and then it gets that feeling but if you're not doing that regularly if people aren't asking you about the game and what's going on and what you're doing in it you know that that uh that magic feeling is fleeting without that interaction oh yeah definitely uh I haven't really been a part of a like a community for a long time before Valheim. Uh, when when I was younger, I played uh, like Quake, the first Quake game, stuff like that. 
And that was like an online type of game, but there wasn't much online to brag about back then. The internet was kind of slow and worthless, so we used to go to LAN parties and stuff like that. So it became like a group of people that would meet up like once a, once a month. It's like once a month we would meet up and go to this place and plug our computers into the network and play Quake with each other. But nowadays it's much more easily accessible. You can just start your computer and there it is. <laughs> All your friends, the game, everything in front of you. So it's much easier nowadays. Which I appreciate. Add to some, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't really, there weren't really much griefing and stuff back uh, on lawn parties because you would see people that were sitting in front of you. <laughs> but with the internet, then uh, you can pretty much gain access to uh, anything you want. Then, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of trolls out there <laughs> that weren't. So back. I have, when, when I say too convenient, I mean more for myself personally because I've found that often I like sit down to use the computer and I have a specific task that I'm trying to do. And I'll open the application to do that. But then there's so many other things that distract me that are meant to distract me that it's like I have to use all this cognition to just like make sure I do the thing I sat down to do and I don't get distracted by all the other things in Discord or on YouTube. And I don't even like have a phone. I don't even use Instagram and TikTok and social media and these things like other people do. So I have, I have no idea how they managed to get anything done when they're constantly surrounded with like infinite distractions. Me, me personally, I can, I can really only operate when I put myself in a situation where the distractions just aren't there. And that's yeah, just yeah, to yeah. elaborate a little bit. Um, yeah, but I, I, but so, I, can, I can see that happening. I mean, I kind of uh, both hate and love YouTube for that reason. Because it, it's very easy to get sucked in and just, you know, oh, this is a cool short, I'll watch that. And two hours later, you wake up and, oh, what happened? <laughs> All right. It, it makes sense to me that you liked Fallout and um, Skyrim because these are, are very RPG games. And it seems that a lot of people who enjoy Valheim have an, a, a big interest in Skyrim and that sort of thing. I want to learn more about this notion of Vikings and stuff because I've looked at the demographics for Valheim and I've noticed that it's almost exclusively popular like actually popular in scandinavian areas and areas related to viking so even though sweden has less people like there is more demand for this kind of thing in sweden finland russia denmark all of these kind of areas show up on the map it literally like you can look at viking influence and valheim players and it overlays it it's like a perfect match and so I'm trying to understand, why do you think that is? I really have no idea, to be honest. Uh, because uh, for, for all the years that I lived in Sweden, uh, which was more than, uh, more than 30, <laughs> I, I never really experienced any Viking interest or any specifically Viking things. I mean, of course, if you go to like a museum, there's a bunch of Viking stuff there, but there weren't any real interest, at least in my surroundings, in my area, for anything Viking related, as far as I know. Interesting. So, so would you say that you got into Valheim for reasons that has nothing to do with Vikings? Well, for me, I'm generally interested in, in history as a whole, not just Vikings, so... For me, uh, I, would, I would say the the historical aspect of the whole thing, the Viking thing for in Valheim, it, it's not really the first thing that I see when I play the game. Uh, I uh, I think I see like more the freedom of choice and uh, what you can do in the game before I see the Viking stuff. It's, it's that, exactly the same for me. And that, that's why I was so confused looking at the demographics. I was like, this, this doesn't make sense to me. Why is it so s split so well? Yeah, I mean, because uh, if you look at it uh, critically, uh, there's only really Viking stuff in like the first, I'd say, three, 
what the first two biomes and then the mountains maybe the swamps not so much <laughs> that's actually the, that's i would say are viking relatable but the rest with the magic stuff and all the loxes and all that stuff that's just fantasy <laughs> yeah so it, it it it's basically a game for me but it it's a game with a lot of freedom and if you're like in my case uh, you stop playing Valheim, you turn it into like a set or a stage for like small <laughs> small scenes that you play out with characters and stuff. I mean, it's not really Valheim anymore. It's it's uh, it's something bigger for me when I do that sort of thing. That sounds like a gr great thing to get more into. So would, would you say that which is more fun to you? Like just building something for the sake of just building it? Or building a set for one of your skits. Uh, that's a tough uh, one to. Uh, actually, I, I like them both because uh, building is it has like a therapeutic value to me. Uh, I can just uh, sort of space out and just build something for hours without really <laughs> without being bothered by anything else. Uh, and uh, once I've finished the build. I can use it as a stage for whatever weird crap I come up with. Yeah, but then, but then sometimes I have an idea for like a thing. Uh, like if if you ever saw that that uh, short I did with Bori, who had a like a boar farm with boars everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That that one I had an idea for the the boar farm, and then I built something around that instead. So that was the other way around. Because you make content everything you build can potentially become content so the question's kind of moot isn't it yeah i mean if it's uh everything doesn't have to be a magnificent castle for me if it could be like a small wooden sh sh shack in the forest and i could use that like a prop <laughs> in a skit instead of a, a build video for example so I everything is better used for, for people something. really it's uh People, now that I've made more videos and connected with more like random Valheim players, in, in general, people are more often than not uncomfortable building and they're very intimidated by the things they see online because there's so much grandness and hugeness because, of course, that's the stuff you see at the top that bubbles up through yeah, the yeah, algorithm yeah. is the really vast stuff, right? I was just about so to I think say it's good. that. Yeah, you shouldn't be intimidated because you, you, you should be aware that everything that's posted online, it, it's the stuff that that person is the most proud of. It's their like their grand build, their best effort. Nobody ever puts their shittiest crab shack on, on YouTube. And just, this is my house. It, everything you see is, is just top level. So you can't really compare yourself to that unless you've been building for three years and want to compare yourself to that. But as a normal person, no, don't. Just have fun. And maybe we can get into that a bit for their sake. So just so those of you listening know, like when you watch videos like that and you see people with really grand, big structures, you should understand that like they are playing Valheim fundamentally different than someone who's playing Valheim. Because to them, it's a building simulator and the reward is making a video or a social media post about the epic thing once you finish. That's the gameplay loop. It has nothing to do with the other mechanics in Valheim. And I'm not dismissing that at all. I'm just saying that that is how these people produce this epicness. So yeah, it's it, silly for us to uh, like compare ourselves to that when we're actually just playing Valheim. Because if we were to do that, we would burn ourselves out and not enjoy it. So like, it's sort of irrelevant. It's like they're playing a different game, and we need to keep that in mind, at least speaking towards new players, I'd say. Yeah, it's just one of many ways you can play Volheim. And I mean, a lot of people playing Volheim, they don't even play the, that part of the game. They just build what they need, and then they go out on adventures and uh, progress through the game like you would any normal game. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's most... Like, a lot of people who play Volheim don't seem to take Volheim that seriously. And that's something that's present in the way that, like, Twitter handles anything Iron Gate does. Uh, the, the social media to Valheim is, is incredibly negative, considering it's a 
one-time payment of twenty dollars. So, wh- why do you think that is? Wh- why, why are people so critical? Have they really hurt us so much? Like, I don't get it. Did, what, what do you think? I don't get it either. I mean, I'm assuming you're talking about comments like, "Where is the next biome?" Five seconds after the every update comes out, there's always people wanting the next update before it's even remotely finished. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why, but I think that's something that's all over the place. People tend to, if they see something on the internet, they apply like a belief or a political or whatever thing to that thing. And then they get to hate that thing because that thing doesn't think the same way they do. But it's sort of they create their own circle because that thing was never said from the other part uh, party ever anyway. So they're like angry I, at their own opinion that they... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. I mean, Facebook is a very good example these days. I think it's mainly just angry people, 40 plus people who use Facebook as some sort of tension release uh, fight place. <laughs> yeah, fight. Yeah, it's like Fight Club. <laughs> yeah, but they they they, they, need, they need they need some sort of therapy and some sort of outlet, but the only thing they have is Facebook. So Facebook becomes like a battlefield of people just throwing opinions on each other and they and then arguing over these opinions that no one really has, but they still have to fight over it for some reason. Yeah, it's, it's, sounds it's like weird. weird. <laughs> sounds like a lot of comments as well. Yeah, I think it's like the same all, all, all over. Yeah, which is why, one of the reasons why I enjoy the Volam community uh, more than other communities, because it seems to be a much friendlier atmosphere overall. I mean, of course, there are some some angry dudes in there as well, but uh, mostly um, I've only ever encountered like nice people. Yeah, it's funny. I, I used to think that it was more like other gaming scenes, but now that I actually talk to people and like interact more it's exactly as you're saying so let's see to get back to your your kind of Valheim situation could you talk to me a bit about like so you were playing Valheim and you got into it so when 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 did you start making content about Valheim Uh, that's actually uh, my wife's fault or or (laughs) Uh, in case uh, no one, in case I mean I'm I'm married to Splash or Pain, who also has a, a channel, and we're on the same. We have the same Discord thing. Uh, I feel and, like uh, I'm your your guys Valheim kid. <laughs> yeah, we adopted you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, so I started playing Valheim. I think maybe two weeks after the uh, early access was uh, released. Because she uh, suggested it to me, uh, said it might be a game that I like. So I, that's when I started playing Volheim, and I started, played Volheim alone for quite a while. And uh, like uh, a year and a half ago, again, my wife suggested that we, we maybe if we like this game so much, maybe we should like make some videos and stuff on YouTube, it could be fun. And uh, I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, I always like to try something new and see what, what that takes me. So, so yeah, we started doing videos. I had no idea how to make videos at first. So, I mean, today, um, one and a half years later, I feel that my first videos maybe weren't that great. <laughs> but at the time, I thought it was really funny and uh, I had a good time doing it. So, I just kept doing it pretty much. And then, you, you know, the more you're, you're in there, the more people you meet, the more friends you make. So, it's uh, they kind of sucked me in. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd say that you, you definitely seem to be able to have more fun than other people. A lot of people who make content, they're very like, I don't know how to put it, but they get, they get obsessed about like views and money and that ultimately burns them out and it takes, it slowly over time erodes the joy that they experience which initially actually brings people to them and like if you want if you want people to really care about you online 
you have to bring them joy. Otherwise, they're just going to use you. But when people like, basically, when people use you to get joy, they become loving to you, if that makes sense. Even though it's the internet and everyone's hateful and toxic. It's almost <laughs> like because things are so toxic and hateful that when you are actually useful to people, um, especially when you're able to humor or amuse them in a way that isn't like harming anyone else, yeah, yeah. like that, that's really good for people, I feel like. And I'm really excited for, for Valcon just for the, the fact that I think it'll, it'll be crazy that the, the output of all of this is going to be like a 24 hour long Valheim video made by loads of different people each adding little clips and like to me that is even cooler than all the other stuff like the convention part and the people and the networking all, all the other stuff is cool as well but the fact that a piece of content is going to get created and it's not just like a live stream of one thing you know, it's literally like a show where a bunch of different people are submitting their clips and their work. I, I'm really excited about that. I think it'll be really cool because obviously we'll be able to watch that afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure how they're going to pull it off, uh, some of the technical things, but I'm not very technically inclined. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I hope everything is going to work out great because it's really, really uh, an exciting thing all over. I can explain some of those for you. I, I've I've talked to the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna work because they're, it's there. <laughs> but um, I mean, playing Valheim with friends, like we've talked about. Uh, normally, if you play Valheim and you you play on a server and you uh, you're like six friends, you're gonna experience a lag eventually. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and uh, th that's where I'm at. I I have this server where like ten people were building a longhouse, and uh, whenever there's like a fight with mobs and stuff, there's a bit of a lag. Even though we're using uh, stuff to prevent lag, there's still a little bit of lag every now and then. Yeah. And I'm thinking is... I'm thinking a server with a bunch of booths with a lot of people, and then guests on top of that. <laughs> there's there's bound bound. There's bound to be some sort of technical difficulty in there somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really curious as to how, how that was going to work out. That's uh, that's one of the things that I want to see, because it's going to be, if, if, if you get to get that to work with all these people combined, it's like a miracle pretty much to me. <laughs> <laughs> so so I can explain. Basically, there's, I think there's four servers, and there's multiple hosts or co-hosts, basically on different shifts. So like I'll manage it for a bit, someone else will manage it for a bit, and another person will manage it for a bit. Um, I, I don't know all the details of that part. I just know I'm, I'm going to be involved in, in that process. Yeah. But when it comes to the actual lag, so the way they're setting it up is basically each booth is spaced out a lot. So I was I, in my head, I, I thought of like a marketplace or like a convention, but it's not like that. It's okay. like e each zone is like that person's booth area and there aren't other booths around that area and there's portals connecting everything. So um, that that's like the, the vanilla aspect of it, but then there's also other aspects. So we'll have like auto kicking probably where a player joins and then they 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 have one hour or thirty minutes or however long, and then they get kicked off the server. Then then that makes space for someone else to join, so oh, okay. that there's like a cycle of people joining and like you wait in a queue basically and join. And if you get lucky, you no know, one's on the server at that moment, and you can you can get in. How many? So let's say you're in like one portion of the longhouse. How many? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, like they're. This whole time, the longhouse clips will have been repeating in the video, so they, they definitely have seen the okay. longhouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they know what, um, what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So how many instances is that? Like, let's say you're in an average part of it. It's actually not that bad. Uh, I've done worse on my own when I've, uh, when I've built 
just for the sake of building, but we try to keep it around uh, like a, between maybe twelve and uh, sixteen, seventeen thousand. Uh, below twenty, yeah, if, if possible. But then most of the longhouse is just uh, it's just a building. It, we haven't put in a lot of furniture or done a lot of decoration decorations inside. There aren't that many torches, stuff like that uh, yet. So yeah. it kind of it kind of works out. There are some some places where uh, there's a, a like a building meets uh, in a, like a corner, and then there's like a stair, and then there's like a bunch of stuff, and then someone decided I'm gonna live here, so I'm gonna put a lot of stuff in this build. <laughs> that, yeah. It gets kind of it gets kind of cramped, but it's it's still manageable with with the better networking mod. Uh, and also, when we we build, uh, we're building vanilla, so we have to cut down all the trees and stuff uh, f to get the resources. And uh, the more trees we cut down, the better the better it becomes. <laughs> the more the lag disappears, <laughs> sort of. Yeah, I mean, it certainly doesn't make it worse as long as you fully remove the trees. I think it's the same with uh, like a copper and bigger stone uh, stuff. Uh, if you if you mine a piece of it, then the the remaining part, if you don't remove everything, will become uh, more pieces than uh, more instances than it were before. So whenever there's a fight with a troll that has a log and they, they hit a, like a piece of stone or anything like that, we have to remove that thing because we need the materials and it's going to be less laggy if it's gone. So could you tell me more about the process when you make skits? Because I'd say that, okay, you do streams, but then also you make these skits. And the skits have like a little storyline and characters and you do little accents and sometimes they have music and stuff. So could, could you talk to us a bit about that? Usually they're kind of short and they're based around like a, like a joke or a punchline or something. Or just some random weird stuff that to me is fun. Like again with the Bori who had all the, all the boars. I just... That old people might not think that's fun, but to me that's fun. <laughs> that's what counts. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it's if it's just a, a simple short one where with one character, then it's just me using the in-game camera dev command thing a lot, flying around and testing different angles, just walking around doing stuff. And then I cut it together and edit a bunch of stuff. Uh, or if it's uh, like again with the Bori character, there's two people walking next to each other. I have to annoy one of my friends <laughs> to get get into my uh, my map and walk next to me for a for a while. And it's 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 not that weird. It's just I have an idea. I write like a short thing with dialogue, and uh, the more the more weird stuff I can cram in there, the better I think it is. <laughs> then and that's it, pretty much. So is there is there anyone in particular that you really liked making that you found like to be more fun than you expected? I've been using this Ragnar character a lot, but that's just because Ragnar became such a popular name, uh, especially after the Viking TV series. If you ever saw that, yeah, uh, that was a very popular series and. Uh, it was a. Well, I wouldn't say what it was about Ragnar Lothbrok, but Ragnar Lothbrok as a character was in the series. <laughs> so Ragnar became a household name that I kind of used for my character as well. But my Ragnar is a bit older and he's a bit more confused, and uh, he has a bit of a. His luck is not always good. <laughs> I like that part. But it's it's like the Spider-Man meme in a way because I have Ragnar and then I have uh, Captain Crumbs, which is me, but also it's not me. And it sometimes it's the storyteller that is ca Captain Crumbs, and then there's that guy who sells the hose. If you ever saw him, anyway, he's been in a couple. He's usually in the background shouting "Hose for sale." <laughs> These three characters all look the same. So I could just put them next to each other and have them point at each other. It'll be like the Spider-Man meme because they they basically basically they are the same character. All these three people. Yeah. And th those are the ones that I use the most. But then uh, every now and then I add in like a like an additional character if it, if it's required. Like if the whole whole salesman needs like a customer, I just add a customer in. Generic like customer. 
And sometimes I uh, use other people. Uh, I've, been, I've had plans to use you as a voice actor <laughs> locations, but yeah, uh, I've, I've been wanting to do that. We, <laughs> we just keep not doing it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all part of being an adult as well. Ninety percent of all the stuff I want to do kind of gets uh, not done because I'm an adult and I have to do other stuff as well. <laughs> so it's it's still in the on the to do list, but I did manage to get like a couple of people in. Uh, uh, Abby K Gaming. If you ever, if you're familiar with that, it's a dad and a daughter. They're playing volume and a bunch of other games. I got the the dad from the, that channel. I got I got the dad from that channel to do like a voice uh, thing. And then there's a guy who was called Chuck that also uh, I had him do some voice. Mm -hmm. uh, but that wasn't for the uh, volume. That <laughs> was for, awesome. was for. Uh, uh, I also do a bunch of other weird stuff, like I take uh, popular scenes from movies and then I turn them into mm, uh, like anti-ads for my channel on YouTube. So I, I use the scene, but I replace the voices with my own voice and some other voices. If I so, yeah. So I borrowed the uh, borrowed Chuck for the one of those. <clears throat> but... Yeah. Those are funny. Uh, I'm hoping that I'll have time to make new ones for the uh, Valcon. So I'm, I'm, I have like a, I'm hoping to be able to make like five of them, and just you know, for the, for for them to use as fillers or whatever, whatever they want. I, I encourage you to do both, to be honest, because it's better to give them too much content, especially in the format you're making. Um, that's going to be much easier for them to use than like everything yeah. else because I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I have a feeling there's going to be too much building content, too many people who want to show their buildings and that sort of thing. So your kind of stuff that's shorter is very unique. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to do as many skits as I can and I'm gonna add the old ones of course but new ones because I like to do new stuff as well and then I'm gonna we're gonna do we're three people doing a video on the longhouse progression thing and then there's uh, I'm part uh, of a stream as well I have my my foot in there <laughs> yeah I can't wait to see the what ends up getting made from this it's gonna be really interesting yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not really doing anything else, so I'm hoping to be uh, a part of or view as much of the content as I can. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to stay up for 24 hours, but I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've accepted that I'll, I'll be able to learn what happened over time after the event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By <laughs> watching bits of it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a pretty cool idea, and the whole thing, uh, I would like to be, be able to... Enjoy as much of it as, as possible, just in case it, it never happens again. You never know. <laughs> so so let's say people want to follow you. Where should they go? Uh, um, yeah, my my YouTube channel might be a good start. I also have a Discord channel. Uh, maybe maybe you, okay. can, you can post the links uh, under the video. Yeah, so if, if any of you listening want to follow Crumbs and see the content that he makes, then you can look in the description of this video and you'll get a, there's a link there to his YouTube channel. And then Crumbs and Splash and I are in the same Discord group called the Poolside. So you can also find a link to join that community if you want. And if you're interested in playing on a server, their, their server I think is full at the moment, the, the longest longhouse server. We try to keep it around 10 people mostly because of the lag so we're currently full yes but you can still learn more about what they're doing and that's kind of thing by following the content and if you're interested in actually joining a server there's space on palm or path of magic which is a no map no portal expand world prefab server that's like a very different version of valheim that i've been working on with some other people so if you're interested in that you can check that out uh really you just gotta get into the discord community and then you'll figure the rest of the stuff out from there yeah. And alternatively, uh, you can rent a Valheim server. And to finish off, if you want to be interviewed or talked to about Valheim, or there's anyone else who you think might 
enjoy one of these conversations or be interested, then feel free to reach out. I'm always looking for people who are interested in talking about Valheim. You don't have to be a content creator. You don't have to have done anything related to Valheim. You just have to be willing to be in a recording, an audio recording about Valheim. Feel free to comment below if you're interested in that. And if you want to see more Valheim content, then like this video or any other video about Valheim, and YouTube will start dishing out the content. Thanks, Crumbs. It was a pleasure. Yeah, likewise.